Ingredients Water, sodium lauryl sulfate Water, sodium lauryl sulfate Water, sodium lauryl sulfate All of these products contain either sodium lauryl sulfate or sodium lauryl sulfate which will be referred to as SLS or SLES on the U.S. Household Safety Information Database, products containing SLS make up an 11-page document with products ranging from toothpaste to pet care. My name is Adam Wolf, and I strongly advocate that sodium lauryl sulfate and sodium lauryl sulfate, although cheap and effective, need to be phased out of household products and replaced with a safer alternative. We're at the office of Dr. Zimmerberg a leading organochemist working with the Australian Government Department of Health and Aging. So what exactly is sodium lauryl sulfate? Let's ask Dr. Zimmerberg. Oh, oh, good day, Mike. I understand you have some questions, Adam. Yes, I would like to know what exactly is sodium lauryl sulfate? Uh, sodium lauryl sulfate is one of those organic compounds that is both water soluble and oil soluble. I have a diagram right here, actually. There's a long chain of carbon molecules bound, and on one end is a sodium ionized sulfate molecule, and on the other end is a methyl molecule, and this sodium ionizing end is soluble in water. This methyl end on the other end absorbs oil, is oil soluble. So now, how is this used? Ah, this, this, this compound, because of its properties of being both hydrophilic on one end and hydrophobic on the other, can be used in a lot of both industrial and household applications. Could you give me some examples of these products? Oh, examples of how they're used in, in yes. uh, commercial products? Okay. Um, they're used commonly in engine degreasers because they break up the oil on the engine and help flush it off easily and also they're used in shampoos because it's a foaming agent that causes little tiny air bubbles to develop within that solution. Oh, is that because it lowers the surface tension? Exactly. It decreases the surface tension. Good observation. And that allows the mixture to be much more compatible in oil and water. All right. Thank you for your time, Dr. Zimmerman. You're welcome. Sodium lauryl sulfate, or SLS, is produced through a two-step process. The first step is ethoxylation and then neutralization. Ethoxylation is a process in which an alcohol is combined with ethylene oxide while using potassium hydroxide as a catalyst. In this case, we use lower alcohol, which is obtained from coconut oil. Ethylene oxide is a known carcinogen, which means it causes cancer. A byproduct of this reaction is 1,4-dioxin, which will be discussed later. Step two is neutralization with either sodium hydroxide or sodium carbonate. A byproduct of ethoxylation is 1,4-dioxin. 1,4-dioxin is an organic compound consisting of two oxygen atoms joined in a ring of carbon atoms with hydrogen atoms filling up the empty spaces. 1,4-dioxin is a group 2B carcinogenic. This means that it may possibly cause cancer in humans. Although sufficient research has not been performed, to prove that it does cause cancer in humans, according to the Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry, laboratory mice that were exposed to 1,4 dioxin developed liver cancer along with other cancers. 1,4 dioxin is not regulated by the FDA and because of this has been known to contaminate products containing SLS or SLES. This means that any one of these products can be contaminated by 1,4 dioxin and therefore possibly carcinogenic. Surfactant is short for surface active agent. What this means is that a surfactant works on the surface of a dirt molecule in helping to remove the dirt. Now if you remember back when you do sodium lauryl sulfate, we had a hydrophilic head and a hydrophobic tail. The hydrophobic tail binds to the dirt molecule while the hydrophilic head remains on the outside touching the water molecules. In reality, these, this dirt particle will be surrounded by these surfactant molecules here, allowing it to be suspended in water. I will now demonstrate how this works. Here we have a greasy glass. It's been rubbed with grease, and as you can see, it's pretty dirty. And it's kind of slippery too. Now, 
if I attempt to wash this with water and just try to get the grease out, the grease still remains. It's still very greasy. But now, when I add the surfactant to it, the surfactant molecules will surround the grease particles to help remove the grease and lift them from the glass and allow them to be suspended in the water. As you can see, the grease is gone and the glass is clear. According to a material safety data sheet published by Mallinckrodt Chemicals, a manufacturer of SLS, SLS is known to cause skin irritation on contact and respiratory irritation if inhaled. Also, mutagenic effects were observed on laboratory animals exposed to SLS. Mutagenic effects means cell changing and is a characteristic of carcinogens. However, due to the small amounts of SLS in shampoo, the chances of developing cancer are minimal. The real problem lies in that SLS does not distinguish between natural oil and everyday dirt and removes both of them. This leaves your hair dry and brittle. SLS is also used in animal testing as a skin irritant to irritate the skin in order to test if moisturizers work. Sodium cocoa sulfate is a better alternative to sodium lauryl and sodium lauryl sulfate because it is less irritating to the skin and eyes. Although it is more expensive, it does not use the same chemical processes as sodium lauryl sulfate does, therefore eliminating the carcinogenic effects. However, for industrial purposes, sodium lauryl sulfate should still be used because it is cheap and effective. We have enough evidence that sodium lauryl sulfate and sodium lauryl sulfate are both harmful and need to be phased out of household products. Thank you for your time.